Well, good morning, everyone. It's Angela from Cake Angel. Welcome back to another Sweet Ramblings. For today's Sweet Ramblings, I'm going to be hopping over the pond to Wales and we're going to be talking to the lady that is the person that really started me on my sugar craft journey. And I'm so excited to talk to her. We haven't actually seen each other for a number of years. So this is going to be a great chat to catch up and for also for you guys to learn a little bit more about her as well. So I can see people logging in and joining us. Hi to everyone that's here. And let me go ahead and add re to the call. Let's see. Hi to everyone that's logging in as well. Hello. <laughs> oh, oh my God. <laughs> we can have a theory moment going on here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I say this every week when I do these and I'm always sort of hesitant. Is it going to work? Isn't it going to work? <laughs> oh, dude. Do they usually have people get in? How so are you? Know? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, so for those of that are just joining in and wondering why we're both in fits of giggles, so this is my good friend Ree from Wales. Uh, this is the lady responsible for me being where I am right now. I would say she got me started on my sugar craft journey uh, and as I say she's in Wales which is where I'm from originally mm -hmm. so Reed, do you want to just go ahead and introduce yourself let everyone know who you are and what you do I'm just trying to stop the tears I'm being really good we've known <laughs> each other for a long long time so and I was lucky enough to have Angela working for me as well so no my name is Rihanna Webb I'm from Dragons and Daffodils let me adjust that camera there we go that's better uh, I'm from Dragons and Daffodils Cakes in South Wales, so, but this is where Angela hasn't seen before yet, because this is the new school that I opened just before lockdown, <laughs> so, which has been empty for nearly 18 months, <laughs> so, but no, it's, this is it, I'm just cake obsessed, same as Ange, you know, it's a lovely job, <laughs> isn't it, we love what we do. I know, right, it's a, it's a hard oh, life. Terrible. It's awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just some back history as well. So I met Re when uh, I was actually getting married and went to a wedding fair in Cardiff mm -hmm. and Re had a stall there promoting her wonderful wedding cakes and uh, so she made our wedding cake for us and I'll share some photos of that after the live today so you guys can oh. see it. It was amazing. I still got some of the little pieces from it as and well. And how long ago so, that now? Oh, a long time ago. Yeah, people <laughs> it was need to understand. Uh, 16, yeah, 16 years. 16 years ago. So fashions change and yes, I do. <laughs> oh, I loved making it. I loved, loved, loved making it. But now, do you look back at some of your earlier stuff and think, oh, I wish I knew then what I know now? And even now, I'm still learning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, it's true and even even sort of videos that I've made even a year ago I look back and I think what was I thinking oh, so <laughs> but I mean amazing. it's good to have that marker to see how you've grown yeah. I think it's really important yeah, yeah. so um so yeah so we made our wedding cake and then I was kind of looking for something new to do as a hobby and she was running <laughs> classes and the rest is history so uh Re taught me how to make sugar flowers and model figures and to cover cakes and fondant and all the sorts of things that I don't do now, but it was an amazing journey to go on. And you still teach too yeah, as well. Absolutely. But I must say, I remember Angela blowing everybody away because we had just done, I think we did some jasmine and yeah. But I remember everybody turning up with their end of term bits and Ange turned up with the most spectacular arrangement. And everyone's like, oh. <laughs> just amazing. Yeah, go big or go oh. home. <laughs> but I do remember the moment I was going around the classroom and I said, and if you'd all like to introduce yourself, and you're like, my name's Angela and you made my wedding cake. It was like, whoa, this is brilliant. <laughs> I know it's funny how it's all gone full circle amazing, really so amazing yeah so you'll have to share it's crazy. your photographs that I sent you Angela in my my first shop studio wasn't it in the kitchen mm -hmm. on probably your first day I think as well I think it 
Yeah, we'll, we'll say it was. We'll say it was. <laughs> I know it was early in, but we call it the pass moment. Because it's that moment if you don't cover your mixer and the ice and sugar goes pass. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and every time like it still sometimes happens not to that extent so I was literally covered in ice and sugar <laughs> but every time I turn my mixer on I'm taken straight back to that moment and I think okay Ree's telling me don't no, do that yeah Oh, dear. oh, it's so funny. Good but day. Good time. All, so. Watching all your lovely videos and things. And, and it's mostly just like, you go, there's Ange and she's smiling again. And it's lovely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. But I think when you find something that you really love, it just, it comes across in what you do as well. And even with all the, the tutorials that you do and everything, it just, you put your heart out there. And I think that's why people also get hooked on it then because you get that passion. Yeah. And I think as a teacher, if you can inspire someone to get that as well, it's the most amazing feeling. It really it's just is. It's a lovely job, isn't it? We're just very lucky. <laughs> yeah, I think anytime you have a job where it makes people happy, yeah. is that's the ideal situation, really. Yeah, definitely. So what are, you, what are you up to at the moment? Um, can't say too much but I'm bringing out some new products so there'll be subscription options as well as one-off purchases she says really trying to watch what she says but it means a new <laughs> logo because it has to add something oh. into the logo she says again trying to be really cagey so it'll either be released in September or October just waiting on finalizing of bits and pieces but I can't show you that side of the school because all the relevant kit is on the shelves. <laughs> but no, that's exciting. Yes. So it's and it's I, I I can give a hint and say well it's something craft based. Make me sign in again. Well done, Apple. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's it's still going to be edible. So, but it's obviously I need my craft head on in order to produce this item for. I can't say anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. I look yeah. forward to seeing the announcement. For that yeah, stamp has arrived, and again, can't show that too quickly. But yeah, new stamp <laughs> ready to sort of start sending things out. But. Um, Book number two is kind of on hold until life returns a little bit to normal, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But the story is already mostly written for book two because there's always a story. Um, and there's yeah. a few figures already made for it. And I've already got requests for flowers to go in it. So I've done all my flower research and my measurements and my colours and all this business. So it's kind of like itching to get started. But I think next year might be more appropriate because it might feel a bit more you know we're not going to see all your yeah. overseas visitors that we'd like to see at cake international in november and i just no that's you want to share it with everybody don't you not just those lucky few that can can get there you you know but uh and classes start back in september which is amazing finally that's good Screens yeah that's and amazing masks and <laughs> forehead thermometers but we're sorted we are yeah. sorted nice and safe you know so how did you find because obviously you you've been teaching for a long time how did you find that transition last year when everything kind of stopped well I was conscious I had ladies in my classes with health issues and I wanted to look after them so a week before the UK into lock went into lockdown we went into lockdown so I closed up the classroom got in got in touch with everybody and said what do you think and we've been talking about it for about a month watching the news and I didn't want to risk it any longer so we went online the week before the UK lockdown in March last year and we've been online ever since we managed three and a half weeks in person <laughs> in September October mm -hmm. and then we were locked down again for local lockdowns as you well know from your parents um, yeah yeah you've got to be safe it was, it was all about my ladies so so now it means mm -hmm. like for example what in in whatever world would i have thought miriam P pearson would be tuning in from ireland weekly to learn her flower skills and then all right i taught one of the flowers in the bouquet where is it 
but she went on to win best in show with her spray and it was just like it's the best feeling ever when somebody does something yeah you had even a tiny part in that so we did this flower called miss jekyll hang on that blue one in the center mm -hmm. and she did lots of other bits and pieces as well but it was the a big part of the bouquet so you know it's like even if it's a little bit if you've helped somebody a little bit it just makes your day doesn't it it does it does completely and you just feel that pride yeah. that you inspired them to, to try and then develop yeah. their skills from there it's an amazing feeling so i've got something i wanted to show everyone oh. as well this is this is Ree's first book um, and it's amazing. So even if you're not really into sugar craft, it's still an amazing book because it's so well written and there's such a nice story in it. So do you, do you want to give everyone some information of how this came about and, and where the idea came it's, from? It had been kind of hidden inside me for about a decade, I think, because I've been teaching for over 20 years now and I never felt I was ready to write a book. To me, book authors are... Alan Dunn, Tomby Peck, Lindy Smith, Debbie Brown, all these people that I really, really look up to. Um, and then it's very strange when all of a sudden you, they're your friends and you still look up to them. So you're trying not to fangirl when your friends mm -hmm. because it's not appropriate. But I, I fangirl over yeah. Alan all the time. He's used to it by now. But it was just, there were all these things I wanted to show. And I've always had people say, and it surprised me they would say you're generous with your teaching and I never knew what that meant and it was Paul Bradford who sat me down and said it's because you don't hold anything back you tell them if they need to know something you tell them there's no oh you'll have to wait until this class or you'll have to do this book or you'll but isn't that what teaching is so I just wanted everything in there so there's over 1200 photographs in the book <laughs> or was it no hang on something else that's not right 720 photographs 128 books yeah page book that's it and it's like there was one figure in there and he's got like 70 photographs for one figure because there was nothing mm -hmm. worse writing for magazines for 20 years and what happens half of the pictures will go missing because there wasn't enough room to put yeah. them in and it's like that's but they need that bit they want that bit so so that's what the book was for but every cake i do is a story as angela knows i always say write the yeah. story first and the cake will come it's it's easy then isn't it if you've got a story in your head and your cookie jumps out at you and you know exactly what you're going to do with it so yeah same thing like what cookies did you do recently and they were really really pretty and floral oh my word and i just i'll have to find them afterwards and cop, put, uh, share them or something and just say because they blew my head away it was amazing <laughs> yeah but it was a story it was a proper story in your cookie and i just i loved them you know it wasn't just like an orange it was a whole story going on you know I think that's the thing because you put your emotion into it too yeah. and then it's not just okay I'm I'm just going to make a cookie I'm I'm making it for a yeah. reason so yeah and it's nice to have that but just to just to show some of the, the pages from this I, lo I love this hopefully this can oh my word there's a story behind that one <laughs> I am not an isomalt artist I will never say I'm an isomalt artist and I decided to put what I call the idiot's guide to ice malt in the book. Because I've done ice malt, I've done pulled sugar. I'm just not good at it. So I didn't ever want to <laughs> take on that and just destroy it for people. So I worked out an idiot's way to do it. And then I booked on this class with, um, oh, what's her name? Beata Marie Koo, gorgeous lady down in Brighton. And then all of a sudden, the subject came up for the class and it was water based. And I rung her up and I said, I'm putting water in my book with isomalt. Oh, my goodness. What shall I do? Shall I not come on the course? Or so I put a bit in the back about her um, on the course and I mentioned her. She says, no, 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 come because it'd be lovely to see you. But it, that's why it's the idiot guide. So if you think of a drip cake, so the water coming off the waterfall is done like a drip cake. <laughs> So you don't yeah. have to even have any skills whatsoever. So that's why I wanted to do it that way. But yeah. And I, 
I think it's it's good because you you do explain every step and like like you mentioned sometimes you'll find tutorials and they miss what we as teachers would just take for granted but as a newcomer you need every ounce of information that you can and you need to show the mistakes as well which I'll often do in my videos because yes we sometimes drop our tools when we're doing something and yes we sometimes put our fingers in our eyes when we're doing something so you need you need to know how to fix yeah. it so you have to be realistic with this otherwise I think people end up with unrealistic expectations and then they don't understand how to fix the issues and they feel like well well I'm I can't do it now no. because I haven't been taught how to fix it. So, so I think it's good that you, like you say, you, you've gone way above and beyond what, what you would see in a magazine article because yeah. you need that information. It's really important. Right, that's why I had to self publish because I'd been um, mm-hmm. to one publisher, I gave them the concept for the book and then they said, well, we'd actually just like a wedding cake book, but I'd already put that concept out there. So, I was stood in Germany at the Cake and Bake Show, and I think it was Cassie Brown, Natalie Porter, Jackie Kelly. We were all stood around in a little huddle around this table. And this somebody said, well, why have you never written one? I said, well, funny story there. I turned down a few because I wasn't ready. And then when I said I'd given my idea to a publisher, immediately it was like, well, you've got to write it now, write it now. And the next thing I know, Natalie Porter's given me her printer telephone number so I can contact them and you'll need to use this and you'll need to do that and that's why Natalie Porter is in the book because and mm-hmm. they're right and I did have a little private Facebook message the day that I said today is the day I'm telling you to celebrate our 20 years in business I'm writing a book gave the premise of it read the first where is it the first chapter because in every uh, as Angela knows very well Every chapter page is the first page, next page in the story for Cyril. And a lady contacted me and said she'd been asked to write one like that. So I'm so pleased I did it. No. Yeah. I will show you. Eddie Spencer's favourite is that one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and there's like, I love of that all one. the cakes he could pick. I don't know why he picked <laughs> that one. But he says, take my photo yeah. of Eddie the Owl. And he's like this. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. Well, we used to go to Squire's Kitchen, didn't we? So it was it was like family, wasn't it? Eddie was one of the family. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, yeah. I, I must admit, I miss that being here now in Canada mm-hmm. because we don't have the shows like you guys do. There are some in America, but it's, it's not the same. It's, I'm surprised because, I mean, I see so many cookiers and the skill in cookie making. Well, you had Marta on, didn't you? I adore Marta. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we had the pleasure to judge together at Cake International. And you can laugh if you're watching Marta, but I fangirled because, oh, look who she is. <laughs> Thank you. I just said I fangirled over hey, Marta. Marta. <laughs> Hi, Marta. I'm going pink now. Um, but it's just these incredible people and the shows are so amazing because you get to realize we're all fangirling over each other because we love everything to do with sugar craft and you know it's it, right yeah. it's, it's a lovely industry it really is but it is uh, we, we talk about it a lot there's there's so much community of competition yeah. with anything in the baking industry everyone is so happy to be a, a small yeah. part of it and happy to help each other and we're all at different stages on our journey and I would say everyone's always got something yeah. to to give to someone else to help them on their journey yeah. too. Yeah. So. And don't so. ever feel you have to be the best in the business you just have to enjoy it yeah. it's all about enjoyment and as you say watching that customer or the student walk out going I did this and that's the best bit absolutely it is but yeah I'm not interested in tv and all this sort of stuff I struggle going online I have to be hence the coffee I have to (laughs) beef myself up to go online but I that's also why it was always dragons and daffodils rather than just me because it was never about me Hmm. it was about the cake I just want to go on and obsess about cake and infuse about cake and that's what that's our job isn't it is to get across the bit so other people can obsess about cake (laughs) 
That's right, yeah. <laughs> so for those that are watching that, that probably don't know the, the story behind the name, how did you come up with the name Dragons and Daffodils? Well, I was a hobbyist at the time. I learned from books, which is why those people I mentioned earlier are so important to me, because they, some of their books are over there. Um, mm -hmm. and the rest are all at home so there are certain books are not allowed to leave the house because they're like two treasured possessions you know but poor Alan's get dragged everywhere so they're in a dreadful state and in the cupboard but if it hadn't been for those people we wouldn't learn so I was slogging away making all these free cakes for three years before I set up the business anybody who wanted a cake instead of their birthday present they would have a cake but it just meant I could practice. So for three years, I just churned out some of the most horrendous pieces of cake you've ever seen in your life, but just practicing. And I realized all I was making living in Wales was dragons and daffodils. So, and people at the time said, well, you can't call it your name, call it something else. So it had to be dragons and daffodils cakes, really. So daft as it is, but I think I had that week, I was making three dragons for people. Oh, wow. I remember that you taught us in one of the classes how to make that little sleeping dragon. And I keep saying I need to make it again because it, it's so different to see something like that over here, especially. It, yeah, because you are so. literally a totally different cake world to us, aren't you? Absolutely. So when I when I first moved here and I started teaching for Wilton, my students would laugh at me because everything that I would reference would be the British yeah. terms. So I would talk about sugar paste and flour paste and they'd look at me as if I was talking a foreign language because it's yeah. fondant <laughs> and it's gum. <laughs> so I, I, I kinda, <laughs> yeah, I had to retrain my brain and it's it's very different. It's it's the focus is a lot more on buttercream cakes yeah. here. We're starting to see fondant move in, but it's definitely buttercream for cakes and not not so much the modelled figures. Sugar flowers um, are fairly popular, but not that yeah. popular. Um, and cookies. Cookies is the big thing here. They're yeah. absolutely huge. Wow. So, But again, it's a different kind of royal icing to what we would be used to. So whereas we would know Eddie Spence with all the intricate line work yeah. and the runouts and everything here, it, it's flood the cookie and you'll get some dimensional piping, but it's uh, it's very different. Yeah. But I, it's still good too, I, I I like it. I'm I'm glad I have that background in piping because it's made it easier yeah, for definitely. me, but uh, I, I still miss the modeling. I always say I need I need to get back into it because I think that for me is like a, like a me thing to do yeah. really, so. Well, I Flowers was always the me thing to do and then before I knew I was teaching more figures than I was flowers but as you yeah I don't know you can get yourself lost in the little world with the modeling can't you so <laughs> definitely <laughs> yeah so you don't do you um do you make many cakes now or is it more so just for family uh, I hadn't made any cakes for three years before lockdown other than for family um I do the occasional order and then lockdown kind of put paid to everything. I'd been requested mm -hmm. just before lockdown to start doing cakes. So I sort of sorted the kitchen at home back out again so I could do cake work at home, teach and work in school. Uh, sorry, somebody's got the little boy in today in case you're wondering what the noise is. It's a big office building. There's like 27 offices <laughs> in here. And there's not normally any children, <laughs> but he's bored. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quite funny. Um, but I, so I got the environmental health officer out, he inspected my kitchen, trust me to, to have not a local EHO officer, but somebody on the board of advisors or something for the whole country. And I think that's just so typical. So I quizzed him to within an inch of his life, which is what you always do when you see your inspector, isn't it? You get advice, you don't just get inspected. And then I took a bundle of orders, fulfilled some of them, and then we went into lockdown. So I am. I still have wedding cakes postponed that they haven't redone their dates yet, or they've got married in a registry office and they're yeah. waiting to do something big to have their cake. Um, but the plan is literally just to continue teaching because it is my first love. Teaching's always been my first love. It was going to be music, but it ended up as cakes. <laughs> so, <laughs> but 
I think it's, I get so much pleasure watching other people achieve. I'm not worried if I achieve. I would far, far prefer it if they achieved. Definitely. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's a whole different level of that feeling that you get yeah. when... I don't know. I miss it because we, we've not been able to go back to teaching in person here. Mm. So I went down the video route instead of the, the online teaching route, but yeah. I miss it. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking of maybe doing some virtual classes. So yeah, we'll see. we did Facebook Live and private though. groups originally. And then September last year, we moved into Zoom. And there were tears in our eyes when we got onto that first Zoom call and there were familiar faces there that we hadn't seen each other since, you know. And we were all a little mm -hmm. bit wobbly and it was, it was just lovely. So it was, I think, the online classes, to, for them to be able to talk to someone, some people don't leave their house at all anymore. Mm -hmm. um, now they're starting to, but everyone's gone crazy around you because they're allowed a bit of freedom it's too busy now so yeah. not everybody is going out still because there's people without masks or you know and i'm not saying you have to the rule is is if it's too crowded you wear a mask or if you're inside a public place you wear a mask and i'm very grateful for that because it does protect those who mm -hmm. need that protection um so i will always wear it if there's a mask sign i'll always wear my mask but I've got some that yeah. can't leave home because of health reasons. So it was their lifeline for us to be able to meet once a week and do ridiculous mm -hmm. quantities of sugar craft. <laughs> but it got us through. It got me through. Definitely got me through. Yeah, I think as well, we, we've noticed over here a lot more people are getting into baking because of being locked yeah. down. And now they're looking for that connection and virtual classes have exploded okay. over here. They have. And I think it's partly because you can have students in your class that, that are anywhere in the world, which you can't do in person. It's it's just logistically so much more yeah. difficult to do Did that. see who's so, just joined us. Say hi, Julia. Julia, who worked in my shop up in Tonrevile. Hi, Jill. <laughs> oh, yeah. You would have worked with her last <laughs> summer, wouldn't you? Oh, I can see a Gerald That's Watkins right. has joined. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. We've got lots of good, got people lots of good people logging in today. <laughs> but yeah, it's, and, it, and I think you, we have to be flexible for what other people need at the moment, don't we? So, so it's like I've moved all the furniture around in the room. It's completely opposite to what it was last time anyone came here. But it means I can put six people in and there's screens everywhere, but they've still got loads of room and there's space between everybody. So at one point we were considering four, but when they said you have to use your own judgment, we did all the measurements. So we're going to do six, but still with screens. So mm -hmm. yeah, keep the screens up. They can at least stay up for the winter and probably the spring, I would have thought at least. And I think people are just grateful that you, you're able to do that for them too, that they can still do things and feel safe. Yes. I mean, that's a big thing now, isn't it? Yeah, so. the juggling is going to be fun because I've got a TV screen there. So I yeah. like to have people sat in front of me there. I will move my, my camera over to that side when we're actually in person. So I could be talking to somebody there, talking to somebody on the screen with my hands projected <laughs> up on the camera it's it's hilarious actually and if one person giggles <laughs> it sounds like the whole room is giggling it's really lovely <laughs> <laughs> but learning isn't it we've got to learn how to do all this technology and you seem to manage it beautifully <laughs> <laughs> i think i I'm, I'm lucky because andrew is very technical and it's kind of rubbed off on me too yeah. so i think that's that's why we uh that's why I kind of went down the video route because we we sort of felt able that we could get our heads around it. But like I say, when I look back at some of my first videos, they're they're atrocious. Well, some of the stuff I'm putting out, <laughs> you know, some of the stuff I'm putting out in YouTube isn't the best quality because it's not actually recorded specially to put out. It is the Zoom call. So when you've then saved the Zoom, I don't think it's same size. No, look, lovely to see you both together. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's very, very hard. You can't raise the quality of the Zoom call. There's nothing you can do about it. 
but we I made the decision to change to that so that people could interact with each other with the friends that they couldn't see um but then I, I put apologies on YouTube all the time saying, I know this one isn't the best quality, but I just thought you might like to see it, you know? But it's um, the, the recording quality is a lot better because obviously there's lights everywhere around the room. But yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of finding what works, isn't it? And tweaking things. Yeah. And I think, I think everyone is a lot more forgiving of it now. They're just grateful to have yeah. the opportunity to do something. And if this isn't the BBC, <laughs> <laughs> if it had been me no. before Bradford and where I went to Susie Witt and did filming for Pretty Witty, especially Paul Bradford though, because I was there for longer and it was more intense because we did it all in a very short amount of time. Um, but I asked loads of questions and if I've ever got a problem, I put on a post on Facebook and said, oh my goodness, I've just run out of space and I'm editing my Cape Flix video. The next thing I know, Paul and David, who are on holidays, are sending me a message saying, we'll get them to ring you now and we'll sort out. To, no, it's okay. <laughs> but they've been so helpful. And so, you know, I couldn't have done any of it without the little bit of knowledge I gleaned from them doing that. So mm. it's for people like me, like the dinosaurs of the cake girl, it's really hard. <laughs> So, uh, every week I ask people some quick fire questions and I, there's one I wanted to ask you because I know the two things you really love doing are flowers and modeling. If you had to choose one, which would it be? I'm probably, it's going to be flowers because I mm -hmm. only ever wanted to make flowers. I didn't want to make cakes for a living. I didn't want to model anything. I didn't want to sculpt anything. And I'm obsessed with flowers. My phone is filled with flowers. I am a tree <laughs> hugger. I, all that is just, you see it like in the cinema, you see it, characters looking up and there's the dog and he goes tree. And I won't say which character, so we're not causing any problems, but that's what <laughs> I'm like with anything to do with nature. So, and what I've noticed particularly in lockdown everyone's drifting towards flowers because it's very relaxing isn't it and i think everyone's taken up gardening yeah, as well yeah but i'm first yeah. the garden's terrible <laughs> so, <laughs> and for anybody watching that's called a quick fire welsh answer sorry <laughs> and then so what, what's your favorite season to make things for awesome. I knew you were going to say that before you even said it. Hundred <laughs> percent, yeah. Mm -hmm. I watched the um, the acorn video that you just put up on YouTube, mm -hmm. and I, I remember that again. That was one of the first oh. things I think you taught us was how to make an acorn. Mm -hmm. And everyone, I'll share the link for it. You should go watch it. It is the simplest so thing easy, to make, and you it? wouldn't believe no. it. So straightforward. And, I have to thank Janet and I think that's... for the method as well. Just to let anybody mm -hmm. watching know, I always credit Janet's side when somebody's in class. But it's, you only, and she, and she said to me, but it wasn't me, but I can't remember who showed me. So it's like, well, I'm still going to yeah. credit Janet because that's where I got it from. But uh, it's so easy. And, it, and when you can do something that's quick and easy, it makes you feel better to go for the more difficult mm -hmm. stuff, doesn't it? It yeah. does, and I think that's that's what I like about flowers too. Is you can make all these really quick filler yeah. flowers yeah. that make a huge difference to the overall spray, and they take no time. I used to sit and I'd put Netflix on and put a movie on and just make a ton of flowers. And you look up two hours later, and you've and got a garden they're everywhere. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, and what's your favorite medium to use now? Because obviously, um, when you taught me, it was flower paste. Yeah. I think it's pressed a lot since then. It's what we realized was with so many students walking back and forth, everything's getting broken. So we're currently, mm -hmm. I'm cold porcelain girl at the moment. Um, but I still obviously still teach in, in flower paste. Squire's Kitchen, all my own recipe, which is by Tombi. Um, mm -hmm. All wafer paper. I guess so many people asking for wafer paper still. So, but any flower spray you can drop and still pick up and use is a bonus in my book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is the downside to flower paste for sure that it 
it breaks very easily yeah it is especially so when I used to teach the um Wilton actually yeah. did a series of, of flower courses and I used to teach those and it was just so disheartening for students because they wouldn't necessarily realize you do need to package it up really well and carefully treat it like you know it is so breakable but yeah you can make realistic things with it so it, it's kind of a trade-off in some ways and that's why we always say make extra, make extra. please make extra. Keep it spare. <laughs> always and then on a quick Thursday cake <laughs> you can pop your spares together and oh yeah there's nothing <laughs> And if you if you look after them, they last forever. I've still got some from probably nine, ten years ago from classes. Yeah. And they, Funnily enough, they I sorted out my flower cupboard. cupboard because I've got a double, it's, it looks like a double wardrobe, it's a double kitchen cabinet. And there are two big long shelves full of boxes of flowers wheedled down from four the, last week. So I wheedled them down and I've now got, how organised is this? One with sugar, one with air drying clays or cold porcelain, and one with wafer paper. Oh, hello. Sorry, it's just very nice. Hi, Denise. That's Denise dog again. Nice yeah. to see you. Hi. <laughs> Getting all the British crew in today. <laughs> Although my, my little head still remembers when Angela says sugar paste and not fondant and root instead of rout. And yeah. Our Canadian <laughs> Welsh girl. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's funny how even though it's still English, you have to change yeah. how you say it. So simple things like um, blueberries, you have to say blueberries. Really? I have not heard that one. Ooh. And then water is water. It's like a D instead of a T and it's always fun. For the first few years, you'd, you'd go to a drive through to order something and you'd have to really think twice yeah. about how saying it and I had an argument at one time in a Tim Hortons which is sort of the sandwich and coffee okay. place here um, about tomatoes which oh, we okay. say tomato <laughs> Just, yeah <laughs> I, I ended up not having any because they couldn't understand me <laughs> that's just so cool <laughs> so, it's funny, and obviously now with the kids, they've got the mix of the two yeah. accents. Yeah, I so bet. That's interesting. And congratulations <laughs> on your Canadian anniversary as well. Yeah, so we became citizens five years ago, and in October we'll have been here 12 years. Oh my so it's crazy. Time flies. It's, you think, and it's just gone. But, I mean, speaking to you just seems like yesterday yeah. since I saw you. <laughs> I mean, it must be the last time I think was. With this squires mm. when we met up there. 2011 yeah, or 2012, that was. Oh my goodness. That's a decade. Ago. I think it was 20, Yeah, that was before we had kids, so. Oh my word, a decade ago. <laughs> That's just crazy. <laughs> crazy, right? <laughs> No. Yeah, once the world opens back up, we'll have to we'll have to get yeah, together. So. Definitely. Well, we sort of did a little get together in Squires before. Well, the last Squires, uh, and I walked into the great hall, the main hall in the in the Maltins, and there was Eddie Spence and Tracy, and obviously with the dog as well. So, we stood there for an hour, chatting in front of the BSG stand. Then we, we thought, oh my word, we're blocking the stand. So we moved a little bit. So then we stayed for another two hours with Alan Dunn and Carlos Laschetti and, and lovely people. And we just lost track of time. But we literally, it was just one of those. And I mean, I've done it with Lindy. We, we stand in the middle of a, a hallway in Cake International and you suddenly realise you haven't seen anything of the show because you've stood there talking for two and a half hours outside her stand. And you look round and there's like a queue of people waiting for Lindy to sign their books. <laughs> so if you ever see this, Lindy, I apologise again. <laughs> it was nice <laughs> to see you. <laughs> it's funny though, but that just shows how how nice everyone is. That there's no like 
nobody's on a pedestal and everyone's willing to talk to you whether you're a newbie yeah. or you've been doing it for a long time everyone is so willing to share yeah. so like you say it's, it's the best job oh. to have and the best industry to be in by definitely, far so definitely yeah yeah so do you have any exciting models that you're working on for for autumn or fall as we for call fall. it um <laughs> not not stuff that I can tell you about yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I've got a collaboration that I've got to do by middle of September, but I haven't even worked on the theme. And I had an extension because my boy's not, not very well. He's okay at the moment, but he's not been too good. So I had to like concentrate on family time. So the only thing I did was teach, which is why they bought me the coffee, teach, sleep, repeat mug. Because they said that's quite appropriate. But Perfect. <laughs> it had to be all family at the time, but we've got a class coming up in September and it's going to be all fantasy stuff. So I absolutely can't wait because one of my lovely ladies is coming back after lockdown and she said, well, we'll do flowers. I know I'm not a flower girl. I'm a model girl, but I'll do flowers if you're doing flowers as long as I can come back. So we started a new class on a Tuesday morning and we're going to do figures. So it's going to be fantasy oh. coming out of their own house and all proper fantasy things going out to the creature's back and so on. I can't wait. Absolutely can't wait. So I should ask you then, because I'm sure everyone else is curious, where do you get your inspiration from? Well, this particular one, Anne sent me a picture of one thing which sent me off on a ridiculous tangent in the opposite direction. But it's always nature every every single thing is nature um and sometimes it's photography for example which i've obviously broken it at some point have you ever seen the picture of the dormouse in yarrow mm -hmm. um and it was just it was yeah. something i'd always wanted to do and what collaborations were great for was you get to do something for you rather than for anyone else and it was for david attenborough's 95th birthday that's what we did that one. Oh, for. perfect. Yeah, but it's always nature. Anything to do with nature. And it's, mm. even if it's just something green going in there, I'm quite happy. <laughs> so. Yeah. I always remember back to that snail that you made a while ago yeah. as you well. When and I, I just think that. Oh. Bin bound. <laughs> it's been bound the night before the competition because I didn't like him. And Adrian flatly oh. refused to let me throw him in the bin. He said, put him on. And that's what the judges said drew them over was this snail sliding across the cake surface. I thought, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but it's that realism though, right? Which is, you're, you're so good at capturing. It's just making sure everything is anatomically correct. Oh, it's the right proportion. So hard, you know, though, isn't it? You, all you've got to so do important. is look at people like Dorothy Clerk and Natalie Sideserf, and I'm just bowing, mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. bowing. Mm -hmm. and. I mean, I've had the pleasure of meeting Dot a few times and she's so down to earth. And it's like, no, no, you just created a whole scene with a whole pride of lions and it's nothing. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, that's what I'll aim for one day. One day I would hope to have like an ounce of what they've got, you know? Amazing, yeah. amazing. <laughs> so. Do you think you'd ever do, because we see a lot of... Um, Coming from the UK, a lot of bigger sculptures that people do. Have you ever thought of doing anything on that sort of scale? Um, the biggest issue, I think, is budget. So I've, do, I've mm -hmm. done the features for Cake International. My love will always be small, miniatures, realism, and all that sort of stuff. So like I did the three features for CI. The first one was was going to be Spiderwick, but we didn't get the permission in time. So we'd already got permission from the Union Blighton Society. So we did the faraway tree. And in the faraway tree, they mentioned the age of the children and that all the characters that lived in the faraway tree were the height of the children. So that's why they were that height. So if any mm -hmm. children came to the show, they could go and stand by Moonface and stick their arm round him. So that was my first ever large sculpt. And then the next thing I did was Spiderwick, and I had two five foot tall elves in the background and a lot of miniatures. And then when I did Away with the Fairies, he was five foot ten. But we live, the house we live in has got steps up to the front door and a, twi a sharp twist, and then through two pillars, 
and you can't get big things out. I mean, even Emma Jane, they've got to get the Gurkhas to come and lift the items over the garden fence, you know? But um, yeah. Yeah. but there's no way we could even change the house in any way because the house is taller than me. It's about seven foot off the floor. Um, typical Welsh side of the valley housing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But, yeah. but so the biggest thing we could get down the corridor was a single person. Um, couldn't get anything wider at all mm -hmm. so and not even here because i mean you're still stuck by doorways aren't you so yeah you almost just need a big unit, big unit that you with can big double door or in. a garage door opening yeah no. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. I've often wondered uh, the the whole logistics behind the transport must be something else. Will you think of Steph Parker? Did you see the Magic Dragon feature at, at Cake International? Mm -hmm. I have a funny feel. I know they had to get a van that was big enough to move the dragon. It was also built in a certain position. Um, I I seem to remember her saying they were outside and it was snowing and. It was just like a garden shed or something or an outhouse that had been put up specifically for this. And it's like Daniel, I remember him sculpting outside in Melanie's B&B &B, and they have to go where they can go, you know? It's just crazy, really. But yeah, a lot of people, I think some people have got places right next to Cake International in order to sculpt there and then move them into position. So I don't think people realize how hard they are to move, do they? So. No. So we see a lot of it over here with um, with Cake Boss, with Buddy Velastro yeah. makes the huge, huge sculptures. And, and on the shows, they'll show the logistics, how it has to go on a little cart. Yeah. And it, I, when I think of Wales, straight away, I think, well, that, that just wouldn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> Everything is much smaller in the UK, yeah. so it's... Much that, smaller. That's so Narrower roads, do. small roundabouts, mm -hmm. big hills. I mean, every time yes. when I've done tall figures, they have to be bolted to the side of the van. So they have bolts through the chest, uh, and it's literally screwed onto the support bars on the side of the van. And then when you get there, you mm -hmm. just take it out and you have to have designed it. So it's only one little thing that has to be slid into place, like Moonface's bow tie, for example. So that <laughs> looks disgusting yeah. when you arrive and there's a pole through the neck. But slide it out, that on, and you don't know it was ever there, do you? So, but it's very difficult for logistics. So when somebody like Emma Jane turns up with her war horse, you know exactly <laughs> what she's gone through to get that war horse there, you know? Yes, yeah, and and that stuff. It, I I've only seen pictures of it, but I the size of it. I think you just. I didn't realize how big the polar bear was until I was sat on it. <laughs> you yeah. know, up you go, me. <laughs> just like, and I thought, oh, that's okay. And then you get up to it and you stand by it and you think, oh, good grief, how am I going to get up there? Mm -hmm. So there's no one giving me a leg up, and it's just spectacular, just truly spectacular mm -hmm. work. So, but no, I mean, Emma had her incredible Maleficent and I had competed with Mr. Chanterelle, the mushroom fairy. So at the end of the show, we took the mushroom fairy over so that I could put him below Maleficent and he could doff his hat to her. So Emma, Emma yeah. do all her glorious big stuff, I'll stick to my little bits. <laughs> the little stuff, yeah. But I think with the little stuff, in some ways, it's harder to get the detail yeah. when it's tiny because you've got less room for error. Yeah, yeah, so, okay, so, so hard. And it's this is why mm -hmm. I've actually got, if I can twist it around, um, a massive <laughs> microscope, or what do you call them? Magnifying glass, and it's got a light and everything mm -hmm. because most of the stuff I do needs a magnifying glass to be able to to do the details like I did a Harry Potter under the stairs so the stairs was 11 inches tall which means Harry's glass of water was four millimeters tall and the teddy bear was wow. the same size so modeling a teddy bear with a pin and a pointed nose tweezers oh my goodness how do these miniaturists do it wow. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> do you find so this is something else I normally ask do you find you have a preference over when you do a lot of this work do you tend to do it more in the evenings or 
in the daytime and do you do it more at the studio or do you do it um, at home it's kind of like wherever the calling whenever the calling takes you but i'm a night owl mm -hmm. i'm a real night owl um and i've had to apologize to judges at competitions because our thing is we're supposed to say spend as much time as you can on it work really hard don't rush it don't leave it last minute but I remember doing a piece and it was my little Maz Tanaka from Star Wars and she got second place. And when I was having my feedback, he says, oh, you must have spent hours on this, which is when I close my mouth and I don't say anything because I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> and Alan, the judge at the time, who was the deputy chair, he looked at me and goes, oh, when did you do this? And I was like, um, I started eight o'clock on Thursday night and we got in the car at seven in the morning. <laughs> And he was, he was like, oh, but I, I, I need to have a time pressure to do my best work. I can't work very well yeah. if I've got a long time. It doesn't work. No, I'm the same. I need, I need that deadline. Yeah. So if I, if I, for example, one of the groups I'm in, we have a monthly challenge and every month when it's announced, I'm like, okay, this month <laughs> I'm going to do it in advance. I'm going to be really good. Usually two days before, I'm like, okay, I really, really need to start this now. <laughs> it's it's funny. I think some of us are just better under pressure. Yeah. I mean, the worst one, yeah. literally the worst one, we were snowed in. So Sal and Cullen Air in London. So we had to get from South Wales to London. And our road was impassable. No cars could move. So we basically got two hills up and our road is on the top. Um, so there was no way up either end. And I hadn't even started my piece. So this was two bit two days before the show. So I just didn't even bother. All the stuff was there. All the, the equipment was there. I'd even made the armature for the figure and everything. So two days before I decided that's it. We can't go. If I can't get there, I'm not going to work on it. They came and cleared the road um, 25 <laughs> hours before we were supposed to leave. So as soon as I saw that snow plow, I thought, I've got no excuse now. <laughs> I've just got to do it. <laughs> but I love him and he's still in the cupboard so my father earth um there's a a few pictures on youtube actually there's a where you can see like my from my designs concept right through to step by steps because I'm always intrigued to see somebody step by step um because they think of things in such a different way than yourself you know that's so true. Yeah. That is true, actually, how we all have, we can all end up with the same end result, but we get there in a completely we'll different, different way. way. That's, yeah, that's so true. Yeah. yeah. So how do you decide what to keep and what not to keep? Because especially when you're teaching as well, mm -hmm. I, I used to find that would be hard. I get so attached to things because I've made them in a certain class with a group of people and you've got all that emotional yeah. attachment to it. So. How do you decide what to keep? Well, I was really good until I got my own schoolroom. Um, and now every cupboard has got pieces all the way along the top of the cupboard. There's three glass display cabinets in the corner. <laughs> um, in the end, it comes down to whether I think the quality is good enough to keep. Because sometimes I will do a BSG demonstration. They may have asked for... For example, recently I did a wire armature figure in an hour and a quarter demonstration. This, it's so hard to do a, a whole figure in an hour and a quarter on a wire armature. I, I suppose I make a rod for my back because I want to show them the whole process. I don't want to have one leg, one arm and the, and the body on and I'll just pop the head on and hey presto, it's done. So we do everything literally from start to finish. I've weighed out my arm, weighed out my leg, so there's no weigh-in required. I can just tell them what it is. But it's quality. I think it's got to be quality. And then damage. If something is damaged, it's got to go. Mm -hmm. Except I have got and one and I can't throw away. Um, and yeah. he's lost his toes on the edge of his foot. But they're still there. I'm just going to get some super glue and stick them back on. <laughs> you tend to keep things that you can reuse as well. I used to do that with flowers. If I yes. could put them into something yeah. else, then I would keep them. And and I yeah, and it's and as you say, it's got to be the emotional attachment. I think with that particular mm -hmm. piece, it's just the fact that Tony D. Talizzi gave me permission to make them. So if an artist has given you permission to make their uh, work, 
you can't get a higher compliment than that mm -hmm. so uh, then That's I worked true. really hard so it's like I did Roald Dahl um, and to try and get his likeness knowing that family members were going to see these pieces and you've got to be so sympathetic to that person who's obviously their granddad is gone but the memory is still there isn't it so things like that are really hard aren't they so if you managed it you can never throw it away <laughs> no that's yeah. true that's true i think when we moved here i actually bought a few pieces with us as Did well you? that made the trip when we emigrated really? but uh I, I don't know if many of them have survived since but yeah, yeah. so I always when, whenever I teach new students I always tell them about my journey in Wales and how we came to Canada and we bought eight boxes of things with us and I eight a boxes. big portion of eight because we we couldn't bring a lot of stuff with us really yeah. it's too ex it's just too expensive to do it so eight huge boxes most of it was cake was it? stuff <laughs> <laughs> so my but all my books yeah. because I knew that to replace books was just number one I probably couldn't get them here number two too expensive so it was cheaper to keep them and ship them with us than it was to replace them and some of them I bought at shows so I didn't want to replace no, them memories behind yeah. the books as well yeah. and then um a lot of tools because again I knew that sugar craft wasn't a big yeah. deal in Canada at the time and still isn't um, PME is is probably one of the most respected brands for tips over here but there's you can't just go to a store and buy it oh, okay. you have to order it. there is and that's yeah. one thing I miss in the UK too you can't we don't have well, there's a few, but there's not many sugar craft stores that you can just go to and they'll have that kind of stuff. Wow. It will be Wilton um, and a couple of other American brands, but it's it's not the same. Really <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I used, yeah, I used to be able to go to the, the indoor market in Bridgend and buy floral wires. You, that, that just wouldn't happen here. <laughs> so it's very, it's very different, but you know that you you adapt and you learn other things so I've become I guess more North American in what I do yeah. now but I'm yeah. grateful that I could bring as much as I bought and I still have so much stuff I have my original scribe tools wow. that I used to use the people and, and yeah it's a uh, I have, a, I have a lot of stuff, <laughs> I should say. And I've just so. watched Sugar in UK. Angela has just logged on. Oh, my goodness. Every time she announces, oh, wait till you see what we've just put in the shop. It's like, no, no, don't tell me. <laughs> and she's up in Scotland. But it's there in an instant. Do you know what I mean? It's There's no time to wait for anything. And I've got Vanilla mm -hmm. Valley is four miles down the A470 from here. Um and to, to be fair, Steve, hello, and Steve will just say, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll get that in. He's amazing, you know? So, yeah, we're really lucky. <laughs> we have a few amazing um, people that you can order from here. Yeah. So there is a lovely lady in Barry that um, her company name is How Sweet Is That? Her name's Sherry, yeah. and she stocks quite a few British brands. Yeah. And then we have Chrissy from Ice and Inspirations down near Hamilton yeah. that you yeah. know, met her. Um, so she, again, she's of the same train of thought as us. She likes that kind of style. Yeah. So there, there are ways and means, but it's, as I say, you can't just go to a store and get that stuff. And it's, it's, it it's, is tricky, isn't it? Because, I mean, I brought out companion products with the book. And I had like a few people in particular from Australia who wanted to get them. But the postage cost to get it to Australia, because I mean, there was, what was it? There was stencils, there was a mold, there was, and when I say stencils, I brought out four, four stencils. One of them was double, double as well. Then there was the, the Rusty the Fox. Breeder in Sugar Press let me, bless her, she let me design a sugar press and then she brought that out in time for the show as well. Um, cookie cutters. But it, it, I mean, it was one more thing, but I forget where it is now. It's on the shelf, but it's around the corner, so I can't see it. <laughs> so, 
but it's how do you ship it you know it's it's mm -hmm. really tricky so i mean i finally registered for a gb number so that i can start thinking about these things because obviously with this the new item <laughs> i need to be able to do that <laughs> i'm not saying it yeah <laughs> No. <laughs> I will share when uh, when I know what it is but uh, yes not yet not yet and they're all actually no I put them in the cupboard so I wouldn't have the temptation to just pick it up and go <laughs> just accidentally say yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well I'm not going to do that That's that exciting. Bill Butler said to me stop telling people your invention she said they're just bringing them out instead of you so so it's true. Really proud of me now because I haven't told anyone yet. <laughs> so um, something else I'll ask is that airbrushing is very, very popular yeah. over here. Do you prefer dry brushing or airbrushing? And the reason I'm asking is I always admit this to my students. I've never owned an airbrush. And I f with what I do, I feel like I can do enough without an airbrush, but what's yeah. your take on it? They know you do both. Really depends on the size, but it also depends on the mm -hmm. technique. Like say, for example, um, there's a Rusty the Fox on my website. He's, he's a life-size fox and he is only balancing on his tail and one leg and then the rest are all in the air. And I felt if you're gonna go to that much effort with the armature you've got to go to that much effort with the color and the only mm. way to achieve that fully is a combination of both dusting painting and airbrushing so i mean the ability to slide across the top of an animal's fur to just catch the top of it oh that takes so long in dusting really does it does but yeah. flowers ah dust all the time mm -hmm. it's got to be flower dust doesn't it it just yeah. I've airbrushed, don't get me wrong, when, when we were doing, at my busiest, we were doing 12 weddings a week. I had one week in the diary that was never, ever repeated again. And it was in the chocolate cake craze and there were 21 wedding cakes, but never, never, never again. Um, 12 was the biggest maximum. We didn't want to go there if we could help it. But I did a lot of cakes where we would do fresh flowers. Um, and I will say to anybody watching, don't put fresh flowers on unless you know what the flowers are, you know what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know where you sourced your flowers from, you could get organic roses, for example, no pesticides, and so on. And whenever I did this, the stems didn't even go in posy picks, because posy picks have got a hole in the bottom, and it's a choking risk, mm -hmm. so there's a breathing hole, so if somebody swallowed a posy pick, so that's no good, the sap goes through. So I always used, as Angela knows, there would be oasis in dishes with acetate underneath. There was so much protection for these, but you could get those cakes out so fast. And they were a pleasure to do because you'd be making all the cakes. You do the baking, you do the chocolate work or whatever. And then you've got to play with fresh flowers for 20 minutes, half an hour. I mean, you can't beat that, can you? But they went out really, really fast, really fast. But I forgot the question. What was the question again? <laughs> oh, I got excited about cake again. What did you ask me? I don't know. It's oh. gone now. <laughs> See, this is the problem. That's, that's what we do. That's what people from Wales do. We, we, we like our tangents. We do like our tangents. But I know it was all to do with... Do you miss doing chocolate cakes? I do you do many of them? Chocolate cakes. I still make them. Um, so I scheduled <laughs> class again to, for Christmas. It was supposed to have been, obviously, previously. But I love yeah. freezer granite slab work. I adore it. Mm -hmm. The instant nature of picking up that molten chocolate and just shaping it. Oh, it's lovely. Yes. So... Yeah, I remember that when I worked with you that you used to, we used to do a lot of the chocolate pot cakes. Yeah. And it's, it's fascinating work. And it... Since having to give up dairy, I, I miss, because I've never found a good vegan alternative Ooh, to do that. I just found one, yeah. There's a company called Keeling mm -hmm. that I buy from, and they sell moo-free milk chocolate. Oh. Yes. And it's not mm -hmm. ridiculously priced either. But for Christmas, we were doing um, chocolate bombs and chocolate treats, which we won't go into the fact that most of them got cancelled because we went into lockdown. But mm -hmm. a good portion of them were vegan. So it's just nice to be able to produce some vegan chocolate things. So what Calibre 811 is vegan. 
the dark chocolate. So I use that. But then if you go into the supermarket, you can buy tiny little packets of white vegan buttons as treats. And if you're careful, you can temper those and then you can use them to do the decoration. So I did um, uh, a, a brand new mold and it was a, a gonk, you know, like the little gnome guys, the Nordic guys. And he was a vegan one. Mm -hmm. So oh, oh, wow. yeah, amazing. Oh, what's she doing? She's waiting for a delivery from Keylink in 30 minutes. Mine's all in my basket. <laughs> I haven't ordered yet. <laughs> but again, we are lucky. They've got packaging. They've got inclusions. They've got molds. They've got, it's just amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very lucky. Very lucky. I, and I understand that when I talk to people from other areas, it's like I, when I was in Shanghai speaking to, I got to speak to the competitor now, what they don't mm -hmm. realize is, yes, I can judge this and I can judge that. But I said to him in no word of a lie, you are incredible. I will never, ever be able to be as good as you. And he did a sculpted isomalt piece. And do you know he made it 34 times before the live competition? And then he made it live from eight o'clock in the morning and judging was at four. <laughs> And when wow. he came to ask questions through the translators, because the whole time I was there, I had a translator all the time. His words were, where can I get professional strength colours from? He had done all of that with what we call the equivalent of supermarket colours. Just, wow. And the, the colours he achieved, and you sit back then and you realise how lucky you are with, the equipment and the products that we're able to use mm -hmm. but to achieve as much as he did with everybody else you could see who was sponsored he was sponsored but his tutor is incredible so she made him do what he could with the tools he had and what he did just blew me away totally blew me away that's amazing yeah. and that just shows the tr the true talent then yeah. if he had all the tools that that so you would have access to imagine oh, what could he what do? He do? I mean, yeah. I mean, he used a corrugated, and I'll tell you where it's from. It's a big home store in the UK, and it's to put all your wires in, and it's like a corrugated plastic tube with a slit down the side. He made machinery and things using things like this, whereas other competitors were using thousands of pounds worth of silicon molds. He had a bit of plastic mm. piping. And then he made like the the rubber legs for the robot that he made. Just spectacular. Truly spectacular. But something from nothing is what Sugarcraft really is, isn't it? I mean, the first lady who told me anything, I went into her shop, filled a basket. She took it off me, asked me what I wanted to make and took half of it back out. Then she took me to her workroom and showed me how to use what I was buying. I mean, that's a sugar crafter, isn't it? That's just... Yeah. And I, I think because I learned from you as well, and that's always been your way of teaching mm. that I always, first thing I say to my students, no, you don't need to buy everything. Yeah. Find what works for you. There's things around the house that you can use. Yeah. You know, it's, it's an expensive industry to be in, yeah. but you can find workarounds for things. The, the most expensive part of our industry, I think, is flowers. Definitely the mm -hmm. flowers, because I mean... The other week I had to go and itemize my flower cutters and veiners because it was getting to the stage where you couldn't remember if you still had that item and you have to check, don't you, before you need it. Mm -hmm. So I've now alphabetized everything. Um, but if I sat down and, and properly worked out what my equipment was, because I mean, if I've been in business since 99 and I was playing with it for three years before that, that's an awful lot of equipment because it's not a hobby, yeah. it's a business. If a bride wants, for example, magnolia, you have to go and buy the proper veiner. You can get mm -hmm. away without the cutter. And I mean, I found my original paper card templates that I had traced from Alan's book because I needed to make stargazer lilies for my very first wedding cake, which is actually a picture on the wall behind me. But why do you need the cutter? If you only actually need to cut out six petals, what's wrong with a template? You know, yeah. margarine tub lids, wasn't it? That's what we used to use. Yes, that's true. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that is so true. I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> yeah, sugar, sugar flowers, I think, are the most expensive. And I've, I've progressed mm -hmm. into clay, which means I've now got pas pan pastel colours as well. So I've got my collection of sugar, which I heartbreakingly had to throw away over 400 pounds of outdated flower uh, colours mm -hmm. because I can't keep stuff in the classroom for students to use as out of date. If you were at home, yeah, you that's... could put it in a box in the cupboard. But because you can get inspected in the business, you can't keep it, can you? Mm -hmm. so but no it's good because yeah. now i know i just reach to the drawer and i know exactly what's in there now i'm not rummaging anymore <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. what do you think is going to be the next trend because obviously last year over here we had um the hot chocolate bomb trend was huge yeah. absolutely huge here what do you think is the le next trend to come well, out the, the current over, trend know? is the dried flowers thing mm -hmm. But it makes me glad I'm not making cakes for sale because dried flowers harbour mites and things and mm -hmm. they're not truly meant to go on cakes, are they? So I would imagine the next thing will be people will be making those dried flowers in either sugar or wafer paper so that they've got mm -hmm. a food safe alternative. But at the moment it's all still very rustic looking so if somebody's doing sugar paste they're doing an awful lot of ripping the paste up and then spreading it out and rolling on dried paste onto wet and so on so i don't know i hope we don't turn back to pristine because i'm kind of hoping we'll go back to more nature because at the moment there's a lot of stylized flowers i'm hoping we can go back to more realism with the flowers so yeah yeah because it's it's disappearing a bit isn't it it's the the realism is some consider it old-fashioned but it's like an artist that paints exact photorealism art they don't always get that biggest credibility in the art world so i'm mm. wondering if the, the realistic sugar flowers has done that but to me that would be the biggest heartbreak ever because the skill, yeah. wildflowers, Angela said, but wildflowers, mm -hmm. she knows, is my first love. Um, but the skill in creating a flower that looks exactly like that flower and you could pick it up. And, and when a bumblebee lands on it at a wedding reception, you know, it's that's to me. That's, I hope we return more to that than the stylized. But I think the stylized is here to stay for a bit longer yeah mm -hmm. definitely. i think over here as well a lot of it has been everything is getting more simplified yeah. because people want to kind of churn it out quickly yeah. so we're looking at more simplified designs and not the big grand cakes or or cookies so much these days what's the cookie um following like over there i think it's growing i do think it's growing mm -hmm. and people like marta are doing huge things for that um because what she's doing i mean obviously eddie will always be my first love with royal icing but him and his pressure piping which was done in the very classical way wasn't it it was mostly white but i can think back to eddie doing cake top flat cake tops but it was a pressure piped geisha or so what marta's mm -hmm. doing is i think really opening the eyes to the to the cookies here but 3d cookies is definitely growing here definitely grow in and i love them i mean i saw mm -hmm. a, a simple version of it i think by anna marina remigio and she did a, a dinosaur and i just looked at that that is cookie so i went investigating that medium to sort of play with modeling cookies and then baking them and i thought there's so much so i mean we had a best in show because obviously i've been judging online for cake international during lockdown and one of our best in shows was a cookie. Did you see the mm -hmm. telephone? It's, wow. Yes. Just yeah. wow. And I mean, that's inspiring. Mm -hmm. That is just the fact that we just had to sit and look. Um, and I mean, in the little batch that I was with, I had Carla Pugh and she messaged me. She goes, did you see the cookie? So we knew that we'd <laughs> obviously loved the same thing, you know, but wow. Just if cookie can mm -hmm. do that, that's just incredible. 
So there's a there's an artist over here called Timbo. I don't know if you've heard of Timbo him, Sullivan. but he does a lot yeah. of sculpting. Yes. Yeah. And I think he's sort of sort of starting off a new trend of that now to move away from just your flat oh. cookies and that that's some incredible work and he airbrushes as well and, if he and gets his hands on those what is he gonna do because his texture work is mm -hmm. sublime isn't it amazing yeah. yes i i mean yeah. part of me really wants to be a sugar his sugar historian because all i seem to do is get excited by other cake artists and what they're creating and then i just want to tell everybody about those cake artists <laughs> But, I mean, yeah, he's, he, oh, if he goes into that, that's going to be phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't met him, though. I haven't met him. So, Mel usually keeps us busy at the shows. But I do remember when I had the faraway tree, I remember I met so many people on that particular show because I was stood in one place and it was just like, mm -hmm. is a picture of me in Avalon Yarns. And I was like, but oh, she's amazing. <laughs> and like when I met Liz Marek and I look up to these people, not just for their sugar craft, but I have to say, hands on heart, Avalon Yarns and Liz Marek, their business knowledge is phenomenal. Truly, truly mm -hmm. phenomenal. I mean, the same with David Bryce with Paul Bradford, isn't it? I mean, to pull these successful businesses together and keep them flowing through a pandemic. I mean, there's a lot of skill in that, isn't there, as well? There is. I mean, we yes, have to be absolutely. business people and we're not really, we just want to play with cakes, you know? Yeah, I think that's that's so true. It's It's been the year of the pivot where people have had to focus on the things that you just kind of would let go in the background yeah. before, but now... Mm -hmm it's really pushed that you have to keep your eye on everything with your business. So. Like I said, I've been watching you doing it online and the presence, your growing presence is amazing. Yeah. No, seriously. And I have all respect for that. Huge respect. Thank for that. you. And I just like, I remember the past. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, I always think back to my little polar bear i made as yes. well do you remember the polar bear? i made a polar bear um it was a few years ago and i remember i had to share this i have to show Ange. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's funny how I, anytime anyone sees polar bears now they're like have you seen this <laughs> i know and i'm sorry i think i went to a meeting somewhere <laughs> and i'm sending you pictures of polar bears and she's here as well <laughs> yeah i get i get pictures sent to me and i'm so grateful I really i'm grateful of mushrooms and toadstools mm -hmm. and weirdly shaped trees always i have so many messages for these and i mean it's just amazing just a smile in your inbox isn't it really yeah it is uh, that, that someone's taking the time yeah. to send you something that they've seen yeah. yeah do you have a wish list of things that you want to make it's it's again all nature stuff i mean i'm not thinking so much a specific animal but it seems so a whole scene mm -hmm. of something um but i guess the easiest way for me to achieve that is with the next book isn't it um but the next book's called into fairy um so it is a fairy book based but the third book no i can't say that the, th <laughs> the third <laughs> book would give me that option but then even when I think into fairy, I've still got scenery. There's going to be more scenery. So like that one you picked out with the turtle, there'll be more scenery in there. Because mm -hmm. that was the idea was you could make everything in the book and it would be like the best, like, um, what do they call them? Dessert table, you know? Yeah. That's, yeah, with a backdrop. But Melanie, very, I was supposed to be working away in the background, making this scene and then donating it to the care homes that the care workers that work in the building, etc. And then Melanie had me going live for the entire day instead of coming in every hour for 10 minutes. So I was on online from 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. finishing it, but having the backdrop there and being able to do everything from the ground up with the tree cake and flowers, animals, figures, it's just whole scenery that's i think that's my thing um i mean doc clerk's done that hasn't she with her with mm -hmm. her displays but i think mine's just gonna be all green lots of green <laughs> 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 yeah 
yeah yeah all all scenery with getting in as many mediums as i enjoy doing at the same time so not just one medium so there would be figures mm -hmm. of some sort and flowers and texture and you know yeah what's your what's your favorite medium to work in then edible will always be sarcino i think um mm -hmm. it's really enjoyable to play with i just find the things seem to come alive under your hands when you work with Saracino. You can still make flowers out of it as well, but obviously not as fine as we would. Um, but of all the edible mediums, I think it's Saracino. And I know I love flower mm -hmm. paste, but what I've discovered is, is I adore making flowers in cold porcelain. But when I first started with flowers, I worked in cold porcelain as equally as I did with homemade sugar pa uh, flower paste or gum paste. Um, <laughs> because the first flowers I made were from Tombi's books and she said pick what you've got in the garden and replicate it when all I had in the garden mm -hmm. were blackberries and love in the mist which was the flower that Miriam did so 55 petals what beginner takes a part of 55 petal flower and thinks <laughs> it's a sensible thing to do but she said make templates so I did I had templates of all however many petals this particular flower had including the stamens which I had to make by hand because it didn't have any stamens and it's breaking down something isn't it but if you do it in flowers I can do more with cold porcelain than I could with flower paste mm -hmm. so I mean when we see the comp the competitors and what they've done in sugar paste in in edible sorry I will never cease to be blown away you know mm -hmm. and cakes always have edible but because I'm not necessarily doing them for cakes, it means that if, for example, oops, you might have seen Alan Dunn did classes, thimbleweed, is this not the most perfect flower you've ever seen in your life? And it's just like yeah, that's beautiful. salad in the middle. That's what he calls it. Hang on, where's the... There it is. Salad. How can you have salad around the flower? And it's just <laughs> the most gorgeous thing ever. But yeah, but it, whatever I can do to make something natural is the best medium. So to keep it forever is cold porcelain or sarcino if it's edible. Yeah, I just love it. Have you got to work with it yet? I haven't. No, it's it's you can get it here, but it's a it's a case of ordering it. So I I need to. Try oh, it, it's so. a game changer. I mean, the combination of regular sugar paste or fondant with CMC added and cocoa butter added, just I don't know. It's a brainchild. Whoever did it is just incredible. So. It's probably one of those things where someone just had a pile of things <laughs> lying around together. And it's just people it's like that's what we tend to do, right? We just. Yeah smush everything together and see what works so. I mean, the only time i yeah. used because i didn't use sarcino for any of my competition pieces because i just used renshaws with cmc and then i wanted to mm -hmm. make um who was it? it was mr chanterelle and he was a two foot tall sculpted figure which i'd never done before so i knew it needed to blend better so i did one third squires uh, sorry one third renshaws sugar paste or fondant one third Squire's Kitchen flour paste, gum paste, I'm trying to be good. And then one third <laughs> a Squire's Kitchen modeling cocoa form. So I didn't want to use handmade modeling chocolate in case I didn't make it right. And it was too short and dry. And, but yeah, that's what I used for him. And it was the first time I'd ever blended stuff together. And then when I accepted the invitation to start judging and Saracino was like, oh why didn't i have this before <laughs> <laughs> just yeah no scenes no scenes yeah wow. that's amazing yeah. yeah i'll have to try it once I, when i get back in so maybe in the fall when our because we have our weather here is quite it's very seasonal yeah. and very hot and humid so I tend to not make a lot of things during the summer because the, the weather just doesn't cooperate. Yeah. But uh, I usually get a little bit more creative when it's fall and, and obviously in the thick of winter when it's dry here as yeah. well. So. Mind you, you have like snow drifts in the winter. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
We we do really get our good seasons here. Adrian watches with jealousy, my husband. He moved to Wales <laughs> before we got married or moved in or whatever. He came to Wales and was snowed in. He thought it was the best thing ever. Not had it since. <laughs> oh, we've had his tiny little flurries. I feel so sorry for oh. him. <laughs> it's cruel, isn't it? So 2012 was the last time we had strong snowfall. So. Oh, <laughs> you just need to come visit over here. You know, we we get a lot, yeah, so we have more than enough. To say. Just disappear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so any before we wrap this up, any advice for anyone that start thinking of starting to get into modeling or flower work? What would you suggest? Where should they start? First of all, don't compare yourself don't feel you suddenly have to be Carlos Vischetti or Alan Dunn. Mm -hmm. um, find a picture of something that you really like. Don't try making something you know you won't enjoy. If you love a subject, say for example, a squirrel. If you love squirrels, try making a squirrel. And then when you've had a go at a squirrel, then go looking for inspiration of other people who've made squirrels and see how they did it. And it's not copying. That's how artists learn, don't they? They learn about, about mm -hmm. Van Gogh and it's the same with sugar art. So, but at first, don't do that because you need to be able to churn out this appalling squirrel with wonky eyes and a leg hanging off mm -hmm. and have loads of fun doing it with your children. And then think, oh, I like this. This feels okay. But whatever you try, try it three times. So it's like if yeah. you try a gum paste, don't just try it once and think, well, that didn't work for me. Try it three times and speak to other people who use it, isn't it? So ask Angela and she'll do some live and tell you all about it. <laughs> but it's, it's true, isn't it? People say, oh, well, it I tried to the cake today and it didn't work. So I'm going to throw it away. What sugar paste do you recommend? No, go back to the one you've got and have another go. Was it too hot in the room? And the same with your modeling and your flowers. If it's a really hot, sticky day, don't be despondent. If it's tipping down with rain, don't be despondent because everybody struggles when the weather's against them, don't they? So yeah. but just enjoy it, isn't it? Oh, totally just enjoy it. Get obsessed. No, don't get obsessed because it costs you a lot of money. No, get obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to be obsessed. <laughs> I'm using that as an excuse, but yeah, it's okay to be obsessed, but just bear in mind it'll cost you a lot. But try and sort of, mm -hmm. if you're going to start sugar craft, don't buy everything. Only, no. I mean, people buy cheap tools. And now with us, what, what was happening was everyone was buying tools from, ta tools from China. You know, the very budget ones, 99p for a set or something. The sugar craft shops have got a cheap version. So buy one reasonably priced set of tools. Go into like the department stores that you have, doesn't it? And they have modeling tools. And then if you like one of those tools, invest in the, the PME version of it or something. But don't buy everything. Please don't buy everything. I, I've always said to students when they are starting to get into flowers, um, a good ball tool is something that will okay. serve you well and a metal one. Yeah. They yeah. are far and above beyond, especially here, the, the plastic ones that are generally sold here, metal ev every time, I think. And now the metal mm -hmm. cheaper as well, aren't they? You can get them a lot better. If you only need one. If you've got a decent metal ball tool, you can use the back of your paintbrush handle for smaller things if you could only afford the one paint ball tool, you know? That's, yeah, that's so true. It's just, it's such an expense yeah. for people. And I, I dread typing up the equipment list for class. So my most common thing to say is an all-purpose leaf vein will do. If you haven't got this one, all-purpose leaf vein. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I've sent out homemade cutters for people as well. Um, if they haven't got the particular cutter. So I've got some aluminium strips. So I just make it and super glue it together. <laughs> Yeah, but it's good to have those options too, right? Because like I say, I think students appreciate it if you give them options yeah. because then they know you're, you know, you're not just trying to sell them what you sell. There's, I, I mean, you can use a scribe tool or you can use a toothpick. 
it, it doesn't matter Absolutely. you you'll learn the technique yeah. it's all about learning the technique and mm-hmm. then you know buy the expensive stuff if and when you need to oh, yeah. but I think with classes what you mentioned about if you're having a bad day or the weather isn't cooperating I like mm-hmm. classes where it's over several weeks so yeah. when I used to teach the Wilson classes it would be a four-week class and you can guarantee from one of those four weeks a student will have a bad day and they'll want to give up but because they have to come back they'll stick at it and then it won't go wrong the next time and like you say do things in threes because you'll learn that okay the first time it isn't going to work so now let's tweak it try something else and then the second time it gets better the third time you you finally think okay now I know what I need to do so it's uh, it's important not not to go in with high expectations no. and just enjoy it. And especially so, with figures, I mean, isn't it? Everybody expects themselves to suddenly be able to sculpt a life-size face and articulated hands. Yes. Debbie Brown did mittens for years. If you looked at all the hands, they had mittens, but you never noticed them until you looked for them. So, and it's like, Yes, there are people that do incredible sculpted faces. Do you have to start on that? We all started. Do you remember the black dot pen dies, the button nose, and the smile tool mouth? Yeah. But you make it it work that way. It works. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And everyone finds their own niche of what they are better at. So. There's, there's there's so much you can learn and uh i mean i i always say to people just try yeah, you're quite you know right. the worst that worst that happens is you might really like it so you might get a little obsessed by it but that's okay <laughs> a little bit <laughs> oh. this is great thank you we, we've chatted for a long time and i think this we has been great <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I know. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't see each other for many years. So. so we did. I did sort of mm-hmm. apologize at the start and say this might happen. Look, there's been no tears. I was close, but no, no tears. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been great. Thank you so much for coming on today and uh, just for giving everyone some insights into what you do. And um, if anyone's interested in classes, where can they find you? Dragonsanddaffodils.com. So just over on my website, there's, uh, at the moment, I think the Instagram link might be linked to YouTube, but it switches back probably today, actually. Um, so I'll mm-hmm. make sure it's switched back properly. But so if they're Instagram people, they can look on my profile. Uh, but yeah, dragonsanddaffodils.com. And there's free stuff. I'm, I'm not as dedicated as Ange. So I, I sometimes have breaks from uploading onto YouTube if classes are busy. But there's, there's a decent lump of stuff on there, you know, so you can have a look at free stuff as well. So, yeah, definitely. But, yeah, dragonsanddaffodils.com. <laughs> Perfect. And then I'll, when we, once we're finished, this will post the replay and I'll tag your account on there as well so people can go and see all the amazing work that you have and check out all your links and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks again. This is, this is great. Nice to see you after all this Lovely. time. So we'll have to do it have to do it a little bit more frequently <laughs> don't leave it so long next and the time your family <laughs> popped on as well it was so lovely <laughs> i know <laughs> so um for those that are watching i hope you've enjoyed this don't forget you can always ask questions in the comments afterwards as well if there's anything you want to ask Ree or any of her recommendations for things that she's talked about yeah. next week um we're going back to cookies i'm going to be talking to mitzi from the cookies, which is something I talk about quite a lot on my profile. So that's going to be interesting. She's huge into business and a business nerd like me as well. So that's going to be fun. Um, and that's it. So thanks again, Ree. It was lovely to see you. And thanks everyone that's joined in today. So thank you very much. Take care. Everybody. Thank you so much. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye.